Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. Today is the anniversary of the day in 1973 when the album The Dark Side of the Moon first appeared. It was in America but it came out in this country a fortnight later and it is of course one of the great iconic albums um, selling something like 50 million copies uh, uh, over the period since then and uh, not not just wildly successful but but also groundbreaking because it was the first or probably the first album to be structured in a way that the artist wanted you to play the tracks one after the other because they they were all part of the same theme they had a, a concept and the concept of the dark side of the moon was based upon the rather arduous lifestyle of the of the band and particularly the effect it was having on their on their mental health one of their numbers Sid Barrett had 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 to leave the band uh, a few years earlier because of his own mental health so there's there's tracks about time and the way that time can uh, take over your life there's a track about uh, flying because Roger Waters had had a fear of flying there's a track about death um, because this clearly was part of the of the life cycle that they were reflecting on the great gig in the sky as they called it uh, and and so a, a brilliantly successful album uh, sad therefore particularly that um, since 1985 uh, the group has only played once and that was for a charity and there has been a a rift between the two of the leading members, Roger Waters and David Gilmore, uh, and indeed Nick Mason, but he stood a little bit on the on the sidelines, so that there is to be a, for example, there is to be a a fiftieth anniversary box set um, produced, and and it will be released uh, next month. Um, but this is only um, uh, this is only going to be done on behalf of. Um, David Gilmore and, and Nick Mason. Um, Roger Waters has produced his own um, uh, album, uh, emphasising his own contribution to the life of Pink Floyd. And of course, this, this is uh, uh, significant because that's really the problem. Roger Waters said uh, in, in an interview recently, um, that the reason he was doing this was because he was the he was the key element in the band, and it could it could never really be the same after he left it in 1985. He he said, "Let's get rid of some of this we crap." He said, "Yes, there are four of us, and of course we all contributed, but it was my project, and I wrote the words. Let's get rid of this we blah," and. Uh, it, it, it's this sense that he was the key person because he he did indeed um, write most of the words and three of the songs but of course it was the skill of the players as well and the whole ethos of the group that made it so successful but he doesn't recognize that he thinks it was just him and what's sad for me I think here is that there's no recognition for him and, and uh, of the value of the teamwork involved. And he's depriving the others too of that sense of being a continuing team by his uh, individualistic approach to it. And so today I thought I would just try and remember and celebrate those people who have been part of teams that I've been in. Um, whether it's, um, maybe you like to do the same, whether it's a, a spouse or a partner with whom you've brought up children or whether it's a project that you've been engaged with whether it's something at work whether it's a, a, a charity that you've worked in or a church or other organization where you've been part of a team that's helped to to run it we're, we're part of teams in so many different parts of our lives and I think today it's just worth celebrating that yes of course we all make important contributions but what um, Nick Mason said about Roger Waters was that he didn't have any respect now for his fellow team members. And I think what we would gain from is remembering the respect we feel for those with whom we have worked in a team and to celebrate team effort.